Last week, we looked at Anthony Baer's Eratosthenes type experiment, where he used angles to calculate the distance to the sun on a flat earth. It was pretty bad, to be honest, and his part two was even worse. So instead of looking at more of the same triangulation nonsense, I found another video from Anthony Baer where he believes that sunlight itself proves reality. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin with today's video, a big thank you to the sponsors, Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is pretty much the Saturday morning cartoons of old in a box, with the same great taste that you remember from your youth, but upgraded with grown up ingredients. A Magic Spoon fits a variety of lifestyles. It's high protein, keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, wheat free, and naturally flavoured. Personally, I eat too much sugar, way too much sugar. So my New Year's resolution is to cut back on that and Magic Spoon makes it super easy to hit my goals. And that's because Magic Spoon cereal has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein and four to five grams of net carbs per serving coming in at only 140 calories per serving. Now, Magic Spoon's treats are high in fiber with only one gram of sugar, 11 grams of protein, and one to two grams of net carbs per serving. And they are only 130 calories per serving. Click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today. You can build your very own custom box with all the flavors you love. And you can use my code SIMANDAN to get $5 off. Now, you can choose from the best-selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter and maple waffle flavours, plus other awesome flavours including honey nut, blueberry muffin, birthday cake, cinnamon roll and chocolate chip cookie. And you can also add the marshmallow and the chocolatey peanut butter cereal treats to your order too. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product it comes with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for whatever reasons, they'll refund you your money back, no questions asked. So start the new year right by clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code on the screen here. And remember to use that code SIMANDAN to get your $5 off. Or go to magicspoon.com slash SIMANDAN to get your $5 discount there. Also, for my Canadian and UK fans, Magic Spoon now ships to Canada and the UK as well. Right, back to today's video, which if you remember, is from my favourite flurfer, Anthony Bear. He thinks sunlight itself proves a flat earth. So we simply have to check this one out. Anthony Bear, over to you. Okay, I just want to make a quick video called Sunlight Proves Reality. Okay, so somebody will show me a drawing like this. They'll say, okay, look at the huge sun. It's way bigger than the earth. And then they'll <laughs> triangulate it down to the earth and say, oh, look, you can see around the corner. So the sun's much bigger than the earth. <laughs> well, let's see if that's possible in reality. This is grossly out of scale. These sort of diagrams are used to try and explain how eclipses work and things like that. They show concepts to make them easier to understand. They don't show exact reality, but please go on. Okay, so here's the sun, twice as big as the earth. And um, as you can see, you can see around the corner. Here's the corner. You can see around the corner, no problem. Because the sun is way bigger than the earth. But even Anthony must know, this is not how close the sun is to the earth in reality. Well, watch what perspective does. Let's move it down, farther down. Okay, so there's our big sun down there. We're about 40 feet away. And uh, look, now we got a solid line. Hang on, hang on. So you've just showed exactly how it can work. I mean, the scale is still off, of course, but it's a much better attempt. Well done, buddy. So, and if you come back here, perspectively, it feels like that word shouldn't exist, doesn't it? Well, shame on you for doubting Anthony's vocabulary because it does exist. The sun is smaller than the earth now. So it can't light up the back of the globe or the, or the side of the globe. Because even though the sun is bigger down there, it's still smaller perspectively. So you can't, it can't light up the side of the globe anymore. Obviously. This is correct. Due to the huge distance to the sun, even though it is so big, it has an angular size here on Earth when we're viewing it 
of around half a degree. However, the sun is a lot bigger than Earth, but you've got to try and think about how the sun emits its light. The light, of course, is emitted in all directions. Now imagine a giant sphere of sunlight constantly being emitted by the sun. You put the Earth in the way of that, and only half of it is going to be lit. Perspectively, the sun is small. That's why the Eratosthenes experiment doesn't prove the Earth is a ball. The sun is, per is perspectively small, so the sun rays can't be parallel. Technically, oh, I don't like admitting this. Technically, Antony is correct. They are not strictly parallel, but the sun is so far away and that light has traveled such a massive distance that they might as well be parallel. They are as close to parallel as you are gonna get. So we can call the sun's light parallel just as we can call 0 0.9999999999999 one. You, you can't just come over to the drawing and say, wow, look, the sun, look how big the sun is and just draw a bunch of parallel lines and say, yeah, the sun's rays are parallel. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, he's so close. If he kept drawing lines in all directions, he'd end up with this. So close, Anthony. Because perspectively, the sun's puny. Here's a real life example. The sun is puny in the sky, and you can see that the rays are not parallel. And here is a train track going off into the distance. Now, you know that these train tracks are straight, Anthony. Otherwise, the train won't travel on them but they converge into the distance because of perspective. The same thing is going on here. Here's another problem for the GLOW model. During the 2017 solar eclipse, the, supposedly the moon casted a 70 mile wide shadow on the Earth. Okay, here's our drawing from NASA explaining how it happens. And again, the sun is going around the corner on the Earth. Here's two red lines showing what I'm talking about. The sun would have to go around the corner. There is nothing about this diagram that shows the sun would have to throw its light around a corner. It perfectly shows how eclipses, solar eclipses, work. We already know, due to perspective on our model, the sun can't shine around the corner. And it doesn't need to for a solar eclipse. The shadow is roughly 70 miles wide on the ground. That means the moon can't be bigger than 70 miles because one of the laws of shadows is you can't cast a shadow smaller than the object that's casting it. Of course you can, Anthony, and that little clip right there was the proof. There are no laws of shadows, by the way, and what you said is incorrect anyway. The moon is supposed to be 2,000 miles wide, so there's a problem for the globe, another problem. Now, before you get all huffy-puffy, let me see your experiment with the, with the single light source, perspectively smaller than the object, cast a shadow smaller than the object. Just dip, my friend. You will see that's not possible. If you take time to study eclipses, you'll find out that the, the moon is probably not even causing the eclipse. Yet you're not going to give us any other reason as to what will, are you, Anthony? Another problem for the globe is daylight. Now, you can pick any day you want. And I, I put the daylight map side by side with the globe. And check it out. You see this shiny spot? And the sun here, they line up pretty good. So where my finger is, right here, that should be the day and night line. Now let's crank it over and take a look. Now here's where the Terminator line should be. Now look how much more light is past the Terminator line in reality. So that's another problem for the globe. And you can see on our model, it's not possible. 
Well, how come I can make it work almost exactly on my globe, Anthony? Perhaps you had something wrong in the setup. Always the same with these globe experiments. You lot always get something wrong. Look, Anthony's got so much more content to look at. We will look at it, don't worry. Just to give you an idea of what I mean, take a look at this quick YouTube short from Anthony. I know, I know, I told you. Well, there we go. Let's call that a day today and say that we're all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see more of Anthony's stuff. I certainly do. Uh, and if you do, we'll make that happen. Do not worry about it. Thanks so much for watching today. It is as ever truly appreciated. If you enjoyed it today, please do subscribe to the channel and hit that thumbs up button too. And of course, if you really enjoyed it, then you can share it amongst your friends and why not even join membership too? The link for that is under the video. Just enough time to once again thank Magic Spoon for sponsoring today. Remember, you can click the link in the description or scan the QR code. And don't forget to use my code SIMANDAN to get that $5 off. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend and I'll see you on Tuesday for the return of the rocks on the surface of Mars looking like rocks. See you then. <laughs>